My name is Paul Barnett. I'm the creative director for Warhammer Age of Reckoning. So one of the things that uh, you guys have been covering here is our mastery system. We've got some very iconic characters. We've got things like squig hunters and they get eaten by squigs and they bounce around. And we've got witch hunters who purge and burn people. And they're very, very iconic characters. Uh, but what people also want is they want choice and they want differential. And the system we've gone for is the mastery system. So as you start to play the game, get used to the fantastic endless war that is Warhammer. You get used to your iconic character class and what they stand for, and you're doing all the crazy stuff that we have you do. Um, you then get to a point where you go, oh, okay then, what are the strategic tactical challenges and differences I can do? Now, sometimes you can do it by going, well, you're going to use long-range weapons, or you're going to hit things really close up. Uh, what we've done is we've used a, a mastery system, so as you develop, we go, okay, it's now time for you to choose the tactical choices for your character. When you're spending tens of millions of dollars and you're attempting to get rich beyond the dreams of avarice because you wish to attract millions and millions of people and you want to do it in a warm and wonderful way so that they lovingly subscribe and willingly give you their money because they know that you give a damn and you care, you basically have to put flags in the ground. Now, in our market, the MMO fantasy market, there is an enormously popular game. They're basically like the Beatles. They came along and revolutionized MMOs. And it'll never be the same again. So we basically had to go, huh, you can't be the Beatles. So we're gonna be Led Zeppelin, the cooler, rockier, heavier band. We're gonna stick to something that we do that we do really well. For us, that's RVR, Realm versus Realm, or as I like to call it, beating the living snot out of other people and beating the living snot out of them in glorious and amazing ways. Capturing objectives, but not capturing flags, because that's dull, but capturing things that we give a damn about, you know, strategic points, um, weapon places, places where weapons of war are made, um, bridges that you need to take. And when you capture them, capture in a way that's glorious. RVR is what we do. It's sort of like the heavy guitar riffs of Led Zeppelin. That's what we do. <laughs> So we're also here to talk to you about elves. Elves are great. They come in two flavors. A high elves, sort of like um, uh, super clean, super posh, super powerful mega being. Brilliant at sword fighting, fantastic at magic, live in their white towers, never done a day's work, super rich. Elves the way they were always supposed to be. For the people who are brilliant, elves are for you. And then there are the dark elves, which are like um, English posh people on drugs. Lord Byron, full of opium. They're basically self-indulgent, everything's about them, they're cruel, they're heartless, they're mean, they want everything now. They have cooler outfits, so black spikes with a bit of purple. They're like emo, live forever, immortal, super good-looking mega fighters. And uh, what we're doing is we're dealing with a civil war. High Elves basically own the land, and the Dark Elves want it back. And the story is all about the Dark Elves have come back with their enormous weapons of war and are beating the living snot out of the High Elves. And the High Elves are basically going, hmm, I guess we're going to have to fight using our immense sword fighting skills and mega magic. Um, it's unlike the other two tiers because this one is more or less a civil war. So we see it from different points of view and different perspectives. So when we talk about uh, what are we doing with our game, why is it different, why is it exciting, why is it interesting, well, we're doing lots of things, we're doing RVR, very exciting. We've also got the Warhammer world, 25 years of figuring out how to make, you know, things brilliant. They figured out every excuse there is under the sun why people should beat the living snot out of other people forever, which is really handy if you're trying to do a perpetual subscription-based MMO. So when we came to designing the game, we thought, well, what we need to do is we need to capture the madness, the greatness, the philosophical lunacy, um, the towering iconic imagery of Warhammer, and shoehorn it into really good functional classes. So that when you play the game, you're going, okay, I generally know how the concept of tanking. What is my tanking class? You need the Black Orc, mate. He's six foot nine, he's encased in iron, he's got great big tusks, and he kill anything that comes near him. Oh, well, I like pet classes. That'll be the squig herder. Little goblin, throws mushrooms, grows squigs, sends them around. Some of them have got fart attacks. Some of them have got spine attacks. That's great for you. Oh, I like doing range nuke DPS. Bright wizard for you. Wonderful. He's a wizard who basically throws fire. In fact, he's, he's consumed by all things combustible. 
you want to be shooting things from a distance with fire. That's good for you. Oh, well, I like doing sort of a mix of sort of like ranged and melee. How can it witch hunters? That's the one you want. They've got rapiers, they've got flintlocks of doom. So it's been mixing together what do people need to do RVR well? What do we need to do to capture the sort of image, the madness, the greatness of Warhammer? And what would people actually want to play? And that's why we have dwarven engineers who are basically like Q Branch and can make crazy special effects and guns and clockwork mines and do all sorts of crazy things. And then we have things like um, the Marauder who looks at the first glance to be some sort of Viking and then his arm turns into a tentacle and sucks your face off. I mean, how can you not want to play these things? So, uh, yeah, on our career system, so far has proven to be robust, balanced, fun and cool, which, by the way, was the requirements that we laid out at the very beginning. One of the things you've got to understand about our game is that it's not a computer game. Ours is a hobby experience. It does the three things all cool hobbies do. It involves skill, commitment and imagination. Skill, because if anyone can do it, then why would I do it? There has to be some skill, otherwise nutters are good at it. There's no fun there. Commitment, you do have to play, you do have to pay. You do have to put time, effort and energy in. But if you do, what a reward. It's the reason all great hobbies are popular. And imagination, it makes you think. It's not immersion. Immersion is playing Half-Life, not realising the house has burned down, you haven't eaten, and your wife's left you. I'm talking about imagination, the reason you wear t-shirts about it, the reason you want to buy things about it, posters about it, the reason you want to talk about it and be obsessed about it, because our game is a hobby. Our game takes up your free time willingly. You basically do it for yourself because you want to, and you find yourself engaging with people who are interested in your hobby, and you also find yourself not really too fussed about things that aren't in your hobby. And that's why they're so hard to make and get right, because you're not talking about a polished ship and forget product. You're talking about a living entity that goes on and on forever. So if we do our jobs right, we should have a great hobby.